So this is the eighth week of these Cornish crosses being alive, being on the property. I had been moving them around consistently throughout the yard and I had expected to be able to harvest them this weekend on their eighth week. But it's looking like we're not gonna be able to do that. We're gonna have to wait one more week to harvest these birds. Now when we kept the birds at my mom's last fall, it was obviously the fall we'd had our monsoon season and she has um, water rights on her property so she gets to irrigate quite frequently she also has large amounts of grass <laughs> which here in the spring i do not everything is pretty much dead when they're babies when they're chicks you want to feed them as much as they can eat all the time uh, but when they go out to pasture you want to start cutting off their food because cornish crosses can actually kill themselves they'll just eat themselves to death <laughs> but I've been trying to cut down to one bag of feed a week, just as a tester, see how quickly they'll grow and see how much feed cost I can save by just feeding them once a week. And that is looking like, need to put a water and it's looking like with one bag of feed a week and absolutely zero grass to forage on, we're gonna have to carry this on one week longer. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing, I, I'm fairly certain that they will be ready by next weekend so that we can harvest them, they'll be at a good weight. And I should just have to buy one bag of feed for next week. So it's only 25 more dollars for 35 birds, not a huge cost, follow. But I really was hoping to get it done this week. And so what we did yesterday to weigh out the birds, and they look small anyways, I knew they weren't gonna be at the same weight we had harvested them last fall. But I bought one of these fishing scales or this is actually a luggage scale but they have these hanging scales at ace hardware home depot things like that and this was about 15 dollars. and i just picked up a chicken put it in a five gallon bucket got the weight of the bucket and then measured from there and right now the chickens are about five pounds our largest one was about five pounds. We will lose two to three pounds in dressing them in things like feathers, feet, heads, things like that. And I want an average bird of around five pounds. So when we weigh these chickens for harvest, we want them to weigh seven, eight, nine pounds to get that five, six pound weight finished whole bird that's completely dressed out. <laughs> So that's good to know that if I do one bag of feed a week, I'm gonna have to carry out the chickens a little bit longer than if I had you know, fed them one and a half, two bags a week, things like that. And at the end of the day, if I'm gonna spend the same amount on feed, it's not gonna really cost me much more except for time. And we have time. The only real disappointment is that we had just planned for this weekend and I was hoping to get it done. But that's totally fine. We'll carry on one more week. They're not costing me any more money than the bag of feed that I honestly would have spent on them anyways if I had just fed them more. Now I don't have the numbers right now, but they are on my previous video of harvesting the meat birds, which I will link above or below or wherever. And we got our the final price of the chicken last year for the amount of feed we used, et cetera, et cetera, was less than or around 250 a pound, which was a really good price back then when the cost of food was high. And still now, if you look in the supermarkets, depending on where you get your food, it's still a pretty good price, <laughs> um, especially if you're looking for organic pasture-raised chicken. It's an excellent price. But I will have those final numbers for you when once we do harvest these birds, I've kept track of all of the feed that I've bought and once we weigh them out, I'll weigh out all the final birds and come down to a price per pound of what it costs to raise these 35 meat birds. But today I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about Cornish crosses as this is technically my first time raising them. Second time we will have raised Cornish crosses, but they were at my mom's last year. And what I think of them as a whole. <laughs> Now right off the bat, I don't love them. They don't act like chickens at all and they are truly little abominations of nature. <laughs> the only thing they care about is food, which is both a pro and a con. The Cornish Cross is a hybrid breed that is specifically bred 
to put on weight quickly and have the best feed conversion ratio so the amount of feed you put in compared to the amount of weight they put out they are the quickest growing meat chicken and if you've eaten normal store-bought chicken uh, your entire life it's basically how a chicken looks it's the same breed that they use in commercial markets is the cornish cross and in that regard they are extremely valuable and good for production of meat they are going to be your cheapest option when it comes to raising meat birds and the amount of meat that you get for the amount of food that you put into them. That being said, they are crazy. <laughs> if y'all can see this right here, this is from a peck that I got right now when I was feeding them this morning. And they break skin. They don't, they don't care what is in their coop. If you have food or if you don't have food, you are the food. <laughs> so they will constantly peck at you and they've got sharp little heavy beaks. They're big birds for their size. And they are just an absolute nightmare to feed. I have on several occasions gotten pecked, they break skin. And when you're feeding them, they just are completely ravenous for that food. They will walk all over each other, step on each other's heads, get under the feed buckets if you're putting the feed bins in, and get squished in the process because they all just jump on, on the feed bin. And it's, it's really just an absolute nightmare to feed them, and it's kind of gross to watch. <laughs> I have seen them forage on grass when they were at my mom's and they will do that. They'll pick at weeds that I toss in there, but for the most part, they are terrible, terrible foragers. And I've tried to supplement their feed and my feed bill with various weeds and plants from the garden and kitchen scraps, and they want absolutely nothing to do with it besides just eat their store-bought feed. Which, taking into account their feed conversion ratio, it's it's okay it's doable it's you can do this cheaper than you can buy a store-bought chicken but it would be nice if i would be able to supplement their feed with something else the one thing that i have found that they will eat is squash so i have a bunch of butternut squashes left over from last year's harvest that i never got around to eating and i have been throwing them in there and that is the one thing that they will peck at and finish that I put in there, but nothing, nothing else, nothing else that I have put in their coop have they enjoyed. And it's honestly a hard battle trying to choose between wanting a chicken that acts like a chicken and wanting the best bang for your buck. And I know that doesn't sound like a hard battle. I mean, I always, I am very frugal. I want the best bang for my buck, but it's just, they're so weird. <laughs> I don't like them at all. Uh, and that not, that's not to say that I won't ever do Cornish crosses again, but I definitely want to find a breed that's more sustainable on this homestead. So another issue that I have is that you can't create them yourselves. They're, they come from long lines of hybrid breeding stock that have been bred specifically to create this Cornish cross breed. So you cannot, they, first off, you really can't reproduce them with themselves because they are hybrid and it just won't come out the same. A lot of times they just aren't capable of doing it either because their breast size is too big. They never live long enough to reach sexual maturity. They have a tendency to die from heart attacks or bad leg problems. And so you can't recreate a Cornish cross and save yourself money by not having to buy chicks and whatnot. So that is a big downer for them. But on the plus side of that is that if you were to buy a different, you know, heritage meat breed like the American Breast or some sort of heritage breed that takes longer to grow out, those you can reproduce yourself, but you are gonna be spending more on feed in the long run because they take more than eight weeks to grow out, like 16 weeks or even longer sometimes, depending on how much forage you're giving them, what kind of scraps you're giving them, etc., etc. You're also not going to get that large white breast meat that is so typical of the Cornish cross. In almost any other breed, I've heard that the American breast is pretty good for a heritage breed, I mean. 
but a lot of the heritage breeds are going to have darker meat, smaller breasts, and a longer grow out period. So there's give and take with having to buy your chicks every year from a hatchery versus trying to be sustainable and raise chicks yourself. But at the end of the day, it's probably going to cost more money to raise these heritage breeds, even if you can breed them yourself and hatch your own chicks. Just the time to feed them out is going to be longer and then the amount of meat you're going to get from them is smaller. And you're not going to get those big old breasts that you like. So after these eight weeks of growing Cornish crosses, I just don't know. <laughs> I will absolutely raise them again um, because I am frugal and they have the highest feed conversion ratio and they grow up big and fast and have just a ton of white meat on them which the family likes. Not everyone likes a ton of dark meat. I, I'm okay with dark meat but I like chicken breasts, large chicken breasts that I can cook things with. But I also want to try a heritage breed and I am looking into purchasing breeding stock of American breast chickens. Uh, currently unavailable in all the hatcheries that I can find but with the neighbors having an incubator and also wanting to start meat chickens for their own farm something that's sustainable and that we can raise ourselves over time I do want to look into getting some breeding stock of some sort of heritage breed most likely American breast chickens <laughs> And although I don't love raising them, it's really just a personal preference because I think they're weird. <laughs> um, it has, I mean, they're, they're easy. They're so easy to take care of. You just give them food and water and they cruise around and live their own life for eight to 10 weeks. And then you harvest them and they're simple. They don't require a ton of care. They're just, they don't act like chickens. <laughs> oh, abominations, they're so weird. But practically they're the easiest meat bird to raise. The best feed conversion ratio. They're the easiest to clean once you harvest them. I harvested red the other day, one of the roosters that I had out of two. Oreo is the black and white um, Moran that I have. And red, red was made into soup because he was a bully and he was mean to everyone, including the kids. But that was a difficult bird to clean. The, the Cornish crosses are bred to just be easy. You just run your hand inside around the body cavity and everything comes out very quick and easy. They're easy to pluck. And I think they're a great first time meat bird for people. It's just an easy way to learn how to grow and harvest meat birds. But I definitely wanna try some heritage birds in the future. I am, I do have a goal to have a more self-sufficient homestead where I'm not getting a ton of outside inputs and buying chicks every year is a little pricey. <laughs> so I'm gonna look into the American breasts and although we will keep running Cornish crosses for the time being, especially because if we get American breasts, we're gonna have to raise them to maturity and then we'll have to get those eggs and then create little babies. It's, it's a whole long process that has to be done if you're gonna be raising your own heritage meat birds from the beginning. But that is a goal that I have for the future. So that's my little chicken update. I was hoping to be able to do a video this weekend on harvesting those meat birds, but they're gonna have to go another week. I, I could harvest them now, they would be fine. We're just gonna have three and four pound birds and I really like the bigger birds. <laughs> so one more week guys and I will have a video out on chicken harvesting. I'm gonna go see if these <laughs> birds will eat some weeds that I have to pull <laughs> and I will catch you guys on the next one.